Your day turns into your week, turns into your month, turns into your year, turns into your life. If you love how it's going, that's great, but if you don't, you have to be the one to change that. It almost feels like you're missing out if you're not on social media. That's how it feels, but actually, you're missing out when you are on social media because you're missing out on right now. What's up you guys, welcome back. Today I just sat down to do my makeup and answered a lot of the questions that you guys had for me. I put in one of those ask me anything bubbles over on Instagram. This is the look that I did today. I wanted an everyday look but I kind of wanted it to feel a little bit more springy and summery. We have such beautiful weather here right now. It's like pushing 70s and 80s. So I just wanted an everyday look, but I wanted it to be uh, just a little bit more peachy and like for spring and summer. I also had my hair in rollers and this is, I'm just like really digging this hair, but, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Please subscribe and let's get started. Zoom in so we can, ooh, ooh get started on this makeup. I'm gonna start with my face and go from there. So I'm gonna do the Lawless Set the Stage primer. I love this primer. I have on a self tan right now and it's developing still. So I'm not really sure what to do with foundation. I'm always like, I don't know, when it comes to wearing foundation while my spray tan is developing, it's weird because it goes on too light, which normally my foundation will go on a little bit too dark if I don't have on a tan, so it's a learning curve. I'm actually gonna use this very freaking bougie foundation that I have not used, I think, since the summer. It's from Chanel. I got it from Ulta. Um, the reason, be I mean, I really do like this foundation, but the reason why I wanna use it today is because I think that this is my darkest one that I have out because the other ones are a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna use my Fox 4 foundation brush. Um, so I actually got a lot of questions asking how I'm doing, which I thought was really sweet. That's nice of you guys to just, you know, wonder, wonder how I'm doing. Um, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. I have spent a lot of time this first chunk of the new year, just focusing on, um, focusing on myself, but focusing on areas of myself that I've never really like tackled before. For instance, um, oh, awkward. My neighbor just <laughs> made eye contact with me. Um, Anyway, focusing on like my mental health in a way that I've never done before. So I've talked about going to therapy and I actually had some therapy type questions in here. Um, I had never done therapy before, so it was like very new for me. And I didn't really know exactly what to expect, but through going to therapy, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about just like, I don't even wanna say trauma because I feel like that's such a buzzword now, which is so, it's so weird how like very important things have become like popular. So then when I talk about that, I'm like, I feel like the weight has been lost. Like the weight of the, the seriousness of something that I'm talking about, like kind of goes away because everybody talks about it so much. Like even just the word depression and anxiety, um, I feel like they just get like thrown around where they actually do hold weight. So um, anyway, yeah, I've learned a lot about just like why I am the way that I am, where certain like ways I cope with things have come from and why um, things that are maybe good that I've picked up when I was a child, things that like maybe weren't so good that I picked up, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It's been very eye-opening. I'm getting to know myself a lot better and I'm I'm um, getting more confident. So. Um, but wait, the reason why I say I'm okay and not like I'm doing great is um, it is very emotional and it's just been a long process of just like processing emotions, letting myself feel emotions, and also just coming into my own. And with that, it's been really hard to show up online consistently just because, I don't know, this is a very personal job. It's a very uh, personal place. And I like to, like if I'm going through something outside of like the internet, which is like 99% of my life, it's very difficult to then pop on the camera and act like everything's fine. Or even if I don't act like everything's fine, um, someone's always very quick to point it out. Even if they're not like being mean, if they're being nice and they're just like, hey, like you seem off. Sometimes if you are feeling off and someone points it out, like even just trying to be nice, it kind of just like reminds me like that I'm not doing 100%, you know? So it is very difficult to um, show up and like be on 
and, and seem like I'm a hundred percent. That's one thing that I kind of miss about, um, like I would never go back to retail cause I hated it. But that was one thing that was kind of good about that job is that like when I went to work, when very serious things were going on in my personal life, when I would go to work, I could clock in and my brain could switch into like, this is my job. I didn't have to like be myself and share personal things at work. I could just be of service to people at my job and then clock out and go back to life. You know, it's like I almost like I had that on and off switch with where with this, it's very um, lots of blurred lines and things cross over. So it's just it's difficult and I'm learning how to get better at that. And also on top of that, like just things like because I've been going to therapy and because I've been working on these things, like I am feeling a lot better. And so I feel like because I'm feeling better, I can show up more consistently. So um, I have felt um, not so good just because I have taken not necessarily time off from this, but I just haven't been as consistent as I want to be. And so because of that, I'm down on myself about it. Um, but you know, it's worth it. it it's it, the work is worth it. And um, this process is worth it. So it's been overall, I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. So thank you so much for asking. I also got a ton of questions about Ruben. Um, I think people like forget that I'm like married and like have a relationship because um, I keep that very private. Um, it's not something that I always kept like as private as I do now but I have just over time kept it even more private, if that was even possible. One person asked me, a sucker for romance, what is yours and Ruben's story? How did we meet? So Ruben and I are high school sweethearts. We met freshman year of high school in history class. We had a crush on each other ever since, but we never talked. <laughs> and then um, I think it was junior year of high school. Um, we had like our friend group was like a mutual, like we had lots of mutual friends. So my friend Tiffany, who I'm still very good friends with today, she kind of hooked us up because I was saying like, oh, like Ruben's really cute, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the spring, summer in between junior year and senior year, um, she just kind of like hooked us up. So I remember he invited me over to his house for a bonfire with like a bunch of friends. And um, like, I still remember the first text message he ever sent me because I'm pretty sure he got my number from Tiffany. And he just said, Hey, like, you're coming tonight, right? And I was like, who is this? And um, it's funny that I still remember that. So because that was, that'll be 14 years. Yeah. Because I think that was like May April, May of 2009. So that is how we met. Our anniversary, like of like the official day where he was like, will you be my girlfriend? Um, was July 16th. We got engaged about eight years into our relationship, maybe eight and a half years into our relationship. And then on our 10 year anniversary, we went and eloped. We didn't tell anybody about it. We just like, I think because we had felt like we were married for like years. I feel like once we got to like the three, four year mark in our relationship, it really felt like we were married. We lived out of his parents' house. So we went and eloped because we were planning a wedding in Mexico. That ended up falling through because the majority of the people that were gonna be coming to the wedding ended up not being able to come. And it ended up working out because that, the day that that wedding would have been, would have been right when like COVID was happening. So it kind of worked out that we had canceled that. So because we were planning a wedding in Mexico, we would have had to get married here legally first or after or whatever. So we just thought it would be really romantic to do it on our, on our 10 year anniversary. So we were already married, which we didn't really tell anybody about, and which was really fun. I highly recommend it. If you're ever thinking about eloping, I would totally do it. We both to this day say that was just like one of the most fun experiences. And we went uh, downtown to City Hall. Such a beautiful building. I highly recommend it. Um, where is this brush that I need? Oh. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. It was so much fun, um, so romantic. And it was our anniversary, which just was like so much fun. And no one knew that like we were getting married that day. So then because of COVID and all of that, like the new wedding that we were gonna be planning was gonna be summer of 2020. Had to move that, so we moved it to 
um, summer of 2021 and we actually got the date of our anniversaries. So I say anniversaries because it was the dating anniversary and the day that we eloped and the day that we had our in-person wedding with our friends and family was all on July 16th. That's our love story. We live in Northwest Indiana and which is about 45 minutes from the city of Chicago. I grew up about 20 minutes from the city. So did he, we both grew up like 20 minutes from the city. So we're just a little bit further now. The house that we live in, he and his dad actually built. So I have um, pictures of kind of like that process over on Instagram if you're new or you are unfamiliar with that whole story and how that went about. I did vlog some of that stuff. It was when I had a second YouTube channel. I tried to like keep it separate and do vlogs separately back when I was like very, very beauty focused here on YouTube. Now everything's a blur. I put everything in one spot. I don't have a second channel anymore, but you could still go and see those videos if you wanna see any of the process. And also on Instagram, I have a whole um, highlight dedicated to the build of this home. Our neighbors had this little puppy that I thought was like a little pit bull puppy. It wasn't a pit bull. Um, I fell in love with this dog and so did Ruben, but they kind of just like left the dog outside all the time. So we would just let the dog in our house because <laughs> we live on a busy street and that dog would have gotten run over. There was a few times where we actually rescued her from the street, but um, we ended up just buying her from our neighbors. So that is our dog Pretzel. And she is like our little baby child. We love her so much. I got so many questions about Ruben and like what he's up to. Um, some questions were like, why don't I ever show him in videos? So first and foremost, um, the majority of the content that I'm creating like has nothing to do with like anybody else. So like I don't really include anybody in my videos unless it's like someone who also creates content. You know what I mean? Um, not to say that I never do, it's just rare that I would include somebody else that like doesn't really create content. Um, most people actually don't really wanna be on camera or they'll say, yeah, I can be on camera, but like, don't blah, blah, blah. They'll give me like a lot of things that they don't want me to shoot. And then I'm like, never mind. Like, I'm just not gonna shoot it. I don't want anybody to be uncomfortable. I don't wanna post something that like makes people people uncomfortable. Ruben has never done that. He's never been like, don't show this or don't show that. But um, he's not someone that really enjoys being on camera as it is. And on top of it, um, cause I went through a phase where I really wanted him on camera. I think it was because um, like I'd seen other people showing their husbands on camera and then I was like, oh, I want you to do it. I want you to do my makeup. I want you to, you know, whatever. Um, but it's really not his thing. And now I'm at a point where I, I just like keeping my relationship private. I like that that is like our thing. It's not online. It's not like blasted for everybody to see. People leave comments about me all the time and 99.9% um, .9 of comments are great. There's the occasional shitty comment, but I just, even positive comments, I just like keeping our life private without commentary from others. And it's very special to me in that way. That's just kind of like why he's not really in my stuff. Even vlogs, I just like, when he's home, I'll be like, hey, I'm gonna film in the kitchen. And he's like, okay. And he'll he's doing other things. Or I film like when he's not home. Like for instance, he's gonna be out of town fishing soon. And like, I'll probably vlog while he's gone because also, I don't know why, I've been doing this for 10 years and I still feel weird talking to the camera in front of other people. So <laughs> I don't know why that is. It's just still a thing. It takes me a minute to even warm up to talk to the camera by myself. So that's the other thing. It's like, I just don't really film in front of other people in general, unless it's someone else that does content. So that's honestly why nothing, um, much more than that. But I had a couple questions asking like, why don't you ever show your husband? <laughs> That's why. I'm gonna bring this a little bit in here. I used the Charlotte Tilbury uh, contour wand, my favorite. I was watching some of my old videos and I just kind of miss, like, miss consistently filming, miss being so present. Where is the cap to this? Here we go. Oh, that's not it. Where's the cap to this? What the amp? There we go. Um, yeah, I just miss, like, being so present and post, I used to post three to four times every single week. Got a video editor once I moved here and 
that was so helpful. She ended up leaving her job, so um, I just need to hire another editor. I just need to do it. I keep talking about it like and thinking about it in my head, but yeah. Funny story. So Amanda and I have been meeting up once a week to edit together and work on things together, brainstorm ideas together. Um, it's really fun to like know somebody um, and someone who's like one of your closest friends who can like understand content creation and just like have ideas and whatever. So we've been meeting once a week to do that and it's been so much fun. Um, but <laughs> we have a lot of like, like my strengths are her weaknesses and vice versa. Um, so we were sitting there at Starbucks and like neither of us were having fun editing like what we were editing. I was trying to tackle um, my books and makeup looks video on the Paris apartment, which I've gotten a lot of questions about like why that video isn't up yet. And the reason why is because, well, number one, I took like a little mini break in February after I filmed that. But then also once I started to get to editing it, it was so overwhelming because it's a four hour long raw footage video that I really need to cut down. One of the reasons why I need an editor is I pick apart everything when I edit, which is like something I'm always working on, but, and sometimes it's not a big deal for me and sometimes it is, but with this video it was. And so I could like barely get any of it done. So we were sitting there editing. She was over what she was editing. And so we switched computers. And so she edited a good chunk of that video for me. And I edited a good chunk of her stuff as well. And we had so much fun doing it. I think we might um, do that a little bit more just because it's so refreshing. It's so easy for me to edit somebody else because I'm not sitting there like critiquing the whole time. It's like, I can see the beauty for what it is where when I'm editing myself, sometimes I'm like, why did your mouth move that way? Oh, well, if you don't do that, someone's gonna say something about like you holding this this way or whatever. So it, it was just like so much quicker for us to edit each other. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun doing that. So um, some of the questions I had were, why is that video not up yet? Um, that's part of why. And also once she started editing it, she was like, I realize now why you're overwhelmed because it was so much information in that video and it's four hours long that we have to cut down to like one hour. So it's a lot. Um, another reason why I need to hire like an editor, especially for those videos, cause those are like super intense. But yeah, don't worry, it is coming. We are working on it. It's just, it's a lot. Somebody asked me, what is my biggest pet peeve? I love this question. So I have two, one's a little bit more serious and one's like dumb, but just is what it is. So the, I'll start with the serious one. In friendships, it bothers me to my core when people act like they're one way and then show up in a completely different way. And the main thing is like when they become flaky, where they're like, like I call it like the yes man. I hate, hate, double hate. <laughs> When people are like, yeah, like I'm so done, I'll do that, blah, blah, blah. And then when it actually comes down to it, they're like, no, I don't want to. Um, just tell me from the beginning that you're not into something or you don't want to do something. Don't say like, yeah, I'll be there. And then you just don't show up or I don't like make wild excuses for why they can't do something when it's like, I know that that's not the case. It's very specific scenarios, but in general, it's just like that flakiness that like not being true to themselves and being like fully honest because like, why, why just, just, like just tell me that you don't want this or that or whatever. Um, so that, that reminds me of like in Knocked Up when, oh, what is her name? Leslie Mann. She's talking about Paul Rudd, her husband. And she's like, he says he's in bad cell phone reception areas when he's in good cell phone reception areas. <laughs> That's how it feels. But she was right. I mean, she ended up being right. But I'm just saying like, don't, it bothers me when someone will like make up a lie for something or just like not be upfront and honest about like what they want or what they don't want. Don't say one thing and then something else. And if it's a one-time thing, it's whatever. But if it's like a consistent thing where you're consistently flaky, um, it's it annoys me to my core. It bothers me because it, it comes across as inauthentic and it comes across as lying. So that's like the more serious one. The one that I thought of, and I'm so glad I thought of this because it is something that bothers me, is when you're at a four-way stop sign and you get there around the same time as someone else, but they clearly have gotten there first 
and they signal for you to go like they're trying to be nice. They're just making it more of a shit show than it needed to be. Like sometimes if I know I'm approaching a stop sign around the exact same time as another car, to refrain from any confusion, I take my time, like I I come in a lot later, like I, I delay my stop so that it's more apparent that they have gotten there first to avoid any confusion. At the end of the day though, the person that is to the right is the person that goes. Just saying, if you do get there at the same time, it's the person to the right. Anyways, I think it's just freaking Indiana drivers. It's just like overly friendly to where you're now fucking everything up so, because then we're sitting there awkward because it's obviously that person's turn to go and they're trying to be nice and it's I, I know they're just trying to be nice but it bothers me it bothers me please don't do that if you do that please don't do that because it drives me insane and it just makes everything more confusing it, it makes it makes an unconfusing thing confusing anyway and that's aside from like all of the normal pet peeves of like loud chewing and whatever, which honestly, I don't know if that really bothers me that much. Um, it's not the chewing that bothers me more than silent eating. I can hear someone chewing and it really doesn't bother me. It's it's sitting in silence and hearing like the plates and the forks and the, and the drinking and the just just the eating the food in silence. I have to have some sort of like ambient music on. I need to have something on, just like the fork going and touching the plate and like the cut, it just, <sighs> I don't like that either. <laughs> Two questions about making videos and if it's too late. So the one person says, is it too late to want to start making videos for YouTube if I'm in my mid thirties? And then somebody else said, do you think someone who loves to chat about mental health would do well on YouTube? It's never too late to start making YouTube videos. There's no age on it and I need to take my own advice because sometimes I feel like I'm too old for the internet and that's not true. I'm still so young. It's just, I think once you start going on TikTok, you realize, oh my God, everyone's so young here. But no, absolutely not. Like there's no age. You can be 99 and be making videos on the internet and people will watch you. In fact, I would love to watch a video of a nine -year -old, 99 year old man giving me some wisdom and tips and help on life. There are some videos out there like that and I love those. So no, there is, it's never too late. It's never too late. And here's the thing. When I first started making YouTube videos, it was all about just fun. It was like, this is what I'm doing. You might like it. And it was all fun. I posted so often because it was just something that I loved to do. And then when it became a job and then it became a job for so many people, then they started incorporating like, like changing algorithms and it became like almost like a system on like how to do things. And that's when it started to like mess with my mind because um, if I just keep treating this like a hobby, it does so well. And as soon as I start to pick it apart and treat it like a business, um, I don't have as much fun and it doesn't do as well. So all of that to say, whatever you're making videos on, I think at the core, it has to be something that you enjoy doing. Creating videos has to be something you enjoy doing because if you don't like doing it, you're not going to do well. You're like, you're just not, you're gonna burn out. It's not gonna be fun, you're gonna hate it. There's so many other jobs out there that pertain to whatever it is that you wanna create content about. But if creating content and helping others and like just this whole thing is for you and you enjoy it, then it is, then absolutely do it. But if you're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna like take the time to do this video or, and of course, at first it's gonna be like, wow, that was a lot more work than I thought. But if it ends up being where you like dread it, then like, it's just, I, I don't think that the juice is worth the squeeze. But if you, even if, if you would do it, even if you made $0, like I would absolutely do it. Because when I started, I didn't even know it was gonna be a job for me. And I'm so grateful that's what it turned into. Um, but there is definitely like a lot of obstacles and things, but I would just, stick true to you and what you love and then it will be great. You will be successful if, it, if it's something that you enjoy doing and you enjoy the content that you're creating. And I'm gonna rewatch this and tell myself that because sometimes I get in my head about what's going on in the world with the internet and the algorithms and whatever and it's like, just stick to you, bitch. Just stick to what you love and it will be awesome. You know what I mean? 
So the other question was about mental health and doing well. Absolutely, you could literally make a video if you were passionate about yogurt containers, the most random niche, um, there's gonna be like a bajillion other people out there that love yogurt containers specifically. So if that's something you're interested in, trust me, there are other people that are interested in it. So go for it if it's something that you are passionate about and want to do. Absolutely. The times that I do well on here and the times that like things are going in the way that I like is when I have tuned out the noise and I am doing my own thing. I think I'm gonna delete um, some other social media apps so I can just focus on this and creating and just having fun and not caring what other people are doing because as soon as I start doing that, it changes, like my mood changes and it's kind of like a, show, a slow gradual shift but it is very real and it affects me in a negative way. So um, just sharing that because that is also part of like why I haven't been as consistent is because I have been in my head and I want to share that as well. And that's also something for those of you aspiring to create content or if you already do create content and you feel the same way that I was just explaining, I think it's really helpful to like just get off of social media, stop seeing what other people are doing. It's so hard to do that though, like especially, it's just it's just the way of like the world. Like everybody is just on social media. Everyone is seeing what everyone is doing. And so it's hard to just unplug and be different, you know, and not be so involved in what's going on and stuff. Um, but it, oh, it feels so good. I actually, I haven't um, been on Facebook in so long, I think since 2018, my personal Facebook. I have my professional one, but that one is just linked to Instagram. So it's just whatever I post on Instagram goes on my professional Facebook. Um, but people will like invite me to things on Facebook and not text me about it. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, well I had this party. And I'm like, I had no idea. And it's because they invited me on Facebook. I just miss like old school human interactions. Like I had some friends that just like would almost get mad at me for not replying to messages on Facebook. It's like, you have my phone number, text me. Text me, I'm not, I haven't posted on Facebook since 2018, what do you mean? By the way, I'm drinking a Zevia Cola. <sighs> I go through phases with this where like, I haven't had like normal pop since 2016, I think. So this to me just tastes straight up like a Coca-Cola. <sighs> it's so good, um, but it makes me burp. So that whole conversation kind of brings me to tips for managing screen time. I'm always scrolling instead of doing things I need slash love to do. I feel ya, I feel ya. And it's so easy to get sucked in because there's something about that instant gratification, that instant dopamine rush that hooks you in, you know? I mean, it's designed like that for a reason. And one thing that you could do is set time limits on your app and not in the app itself, because I've done that with Instagram, but it just gives you a warning and then I just delete the warning. But if you put a time limit on your phone for the app, it will actually lock you out of the app and you have to like put in a passcode to like get into it and whatever. So. I would look into the benefits of delayed gratification versus instant gratification. And I think that just especially, oh, I could go down a whole tangent and I think I'm about to. Instant gratification and why it is um, <laughs> harmful for us, like, or just so much of it is harmful. So like TikTok is a great example of instant gratification. And also like something about like going through your feed and seeing like a very happy video of like a dog and like whatever. And then you see like a really sad video of like what's happening in the world. And then you see like a political video and it gets you really upset. And then you see another one that's like a prank video and then you're cracking up. Like your emotions are going all over the place. That cannot be healthy. That cannot be healthy for us. I compare social media apps to junk food because there's a time and a place for them. Like I love me some deep dish pizza. I love some ice cream, especially chocolate ice cream. I love me some chocolate gelato. Those things taste so much better when I don't have them every single day. And if I do have them every single day, I'm in a slump, it doesn't serve my body, like it doesn't feel good. But those things do serve my body in other ways for certain things. Like, I don't know, if I'm gonna go downtown, I wanna go to Italy and I wanna go to get some chocolate gelato at Italy. 
do I go downtown all the time? No, not all the time. But when I'm there, I want to go there. Or the restoration hardware store restaurant that they have. Like they've got the best gelato there. Am I going to go there every damn day? No, I'm not. Am I going to eat that every day? No, because it doesn't make me feel good. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like there's a time and a place for these things. So it's almost like setting boundaries and putting parameters on these things so that you can enjoy them for what they're made for instead of getting sucked in and being like a slave to these apps because that's what it becomes. So tricks for um, helping with this. I put in the time limits through the phone because it will literally like lock you out of the app. Another thing you could do is just straight up delete it completely. Like it, if you give yourself a goal of like one week, no social media, you will feel amazing. The, the amount of time we waste on our phones, even I would just look at your screen time and see how long that is and just see if you can get that down. And it's just crazy. It feels like we don't have time to do all these things, but actually we have so much time because we're so hooked into our phones and technology and social media and the time just flies. So I actually, I just moved TikTok on my phone to a different spot because sometimes people will send me TikToks and then I feel bad being like, hey, I don't have it and I can't open it up anymore. Um, you used to be able to watch TikToks without having the app, but they changed that now. I'm about to put the time limits on again and like give myself only, you know, a certain amount of time for certain apps. So like Instagram, one time I gave myself an hour time limit for the whole day and that includes me posting and replying to DMs and that honestly, that gave me only enough time to do that. Why do I need to go on multiple times in the day to see what people are doing? It doesn't freaking matter. Why am I, why is my life consumed with other people and what they're doing? That's so dumb when you think about it, you know? Like I don't, I don't want to look back on my life and be like, oh, I spent my life seeing what Mary Sue and Susie were doing, you know? Like, what what are you doing in your life? What is consuming your life? Think about the your average day. Your day turns into your week, turns into your month, turns into your year, turns into your life. So what you do today does matter and what you do every day does matter. So um, really audit your life and see what that looks like. And if you love how it's going, that's great. But if you don't and you feel like you're a slave to these apps and you're constantly scrolling you have to be the one to change that and you can do it and I'm right now when I'm talking to you I'm talking to myself as well because I'm right there with you and I do the exact same thing and sometimes it just feels like it, it almost feels like you can't get off social media right like it feels like it, it almost feels like you're missing out if you're not on social media that's how it feels but actually you're missing out when you are on social media because you're missing out on your life <laughs> like you're missing out on right now you know so Man, I'm like encouraging myself to go delete all of my social media apps. Um, I follow JC Marie Smith. She's really popular on like all social media platforms. She just full blown stopped posting for like, I think like a year or something. And then recently she started posting again, but she still hasn't downloaded the app. She just posts from like Instagram.com. I was like, that's a good idea too, because that gets you still off your phone it's not like you're gonna sit there and mindlessly scroll because also the web version of instagram is very difficult to use it's not the same format i just thought that was an interesting way to go about it too and that's somebody who like that was her main job was on instagram and doing brand deals and stuff and she just stepped away from it and i that is so inspiring to me i hope that inspires you guys too i just feel like Sometimes it feels like, oh, I can't do that. How am I going to do that? And then someone like that who's like their main income is coming from Instagram and stuff and they step away because it wasn't making them happy. That's so inspiring to me. I love that. I love that. And, and now she's developed these great habits with it and a great relationship with it. But it's, it's setting that boundary and setting that boundary to honor yourself and respect yourself. And that will also boost self-confidence. Oh, I'm about to delete all my apps. Someone asks, do you like to fish with Ruben or just watch and hang out on the boat? Nine times out of 10, I'm just watching on the boat, but I have tried to fish. I have never caught anything. Um, also, we when we fish, uh, it's for musky. Musky are like huge. <laughs> They're the size, they can be like the size of me. So I'm kind of scared to catch one, honestly. Also, I get motion sickness very badly. So anytime I go, on um, anytime I'm driving in the back of a car or I'm on a boat, whatever, I have to have my motion sickness bands on. So then I get like really weird tan lines. So I'm kind of like very needy on the boat, 
which is very annoying. At least it's anno it anno I annoy myself. Go into Champagne Pop from Becca. This is ultra beautiful when I have on a spray tan. I feel like this is one of those highlighters that works for pretty much every skin tone. In the center of the nose. I have been missing like slay makeup. You know what I mean? Like that era of like 20, 15 to 2019 makeup, I just have been missing it lately. But anytime that I've done like anything crazy, like with foundation, like a full coverage foundation, like intense contouring, I'm like, I feel kind of crazy. But I don't know, I've just been missing, like I just did like a very snatched nose contour and I'm like, I'm gonna spray my face with the Morphe setting spray. I am gonna quickly do my eyebrows. First, I'm gonna go into the Anastasia Brow Wax. I have been really loving this. I feel like it really helps give my brows some shape and then helps so that I don't <laughs> overly fill them in. And then just pushing up the brows. Okay, now that that has dried a little bit, I can go in with my brow pencil. This is the number three in the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. Go through with this and fill in the brow. Brows are done, and now we can move on to eyes. Um, I was undecided on whether or not I wanted to use primer. I think I'm gonna use just a little bit, just because. So I'm gonna use the Painterly Paint Pot from MAC. Um, I just got another question that came in. So many Ruben questions. How tall am I and how tall is Ruben? I am five foot two and Ruben is six foot two. He is a full foot taller than me. When I was asked if I miss my hair extensions, no, I do not. I feel so free. <laughs> um, it is, it's, it's weird because so the extensions were a little bit lighter than my hair. And so I just scheduled an appointment for May to go get my hair done, uh, to get it highlighted because I feel, I feel blah with the color that it is right now. I think it looked a lot lighter and brighter when I had my extensions in. Um, and now it just feels very natural, which I'm fine with. Like, I'm not like hating it or anything. It's just, it's not like, I think with the summer coming up, like I especially want it to be a little bit brighter. The last time I had a full head of highlights was August, which is wild because I used to go every six weeks and get that done. Um, but ever since I've just done, um, I'll either skip getting anything done or just like the front and sides. So like underneath, especially, and in the back, like it really needs highlights for what I'm going for. But I think what I plan to do is I'll get it done in May. And then I think um, come the fall, like August, September-ish, I'll probably go back to like doing some low lights and stuff um, and just kind of like alternate it. And, um, but as far as like the extensions go, like with the style, it is weird because I know like when I had my extensions, I know I would look like really glam if I just curled my hair. Um, but now it's like I have to put in effort to make it look cute. It's just a learning curve. It's something different, but no, I'm not missing them at all. I feel like I could just throw my hair up if I need to. And it's like, I could just do it instead of having to like maneuver the extensions and like work around them and stuff. It's so nice. And Ruben can run his hands, his fingers through my hair. It's, it's really nice. Okay, I'm gonna play around with a few different shadows, just whatever I have laying here. I've got this Man Eater palette. I'm obsessed with this. It's like my go-to palette for years. Next question is, how do I not get annoyed of eating the same thing all the time? Um, I think that's just a very personal thing. I think people are different in that way. Like Ruben is someone who really likes something different all the time. And I'm someone where once I find something that I'm just really liking at the moment, I could eat it for a really long time. So that's just me. I think it's a personal thing. I think most people like to switch things up. So if you find that you just keep eating the same thing, maybe stop doing that. <laughs> maybe try switching it up. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's all about like finding what works best for you and what foods you like, and then eating in that way. If you don't like eating the same thing all the time and then switch it up. Someone asked if I'm still training to do a half marathon and I am. Um, this past week, I actually um, haven't run yet. I have been like the last few weeks, but this last week I didn't, um, which maybe I'll do that today. I don't know. Um, I started doing hot yoga this week, or actually not this week, 
Last week I started doing hot yoga and I did it more this week and I've just really, really been enjoying it. It feels like a detox. So right now I'm kind of like switching things up with my current workout routine, um, giving myself more flexibility. And for the longest time, that was another question I got is like staying consistent in the gym and motivated and stuff. Last year I knew I needed to like get out of my head and like get back into a routine because I was in such a funk and a way that I did that was I hired a personal trainer um, mainly for accountability. If I was going to be meeting somebody like I would be there like if I if I'm signed up for a class I will be there but like going on my own was just something I wasn't doing so it's been a year now and I feel like I'm now at a point where I I actually want to go and there are times where obviously like motivation isn't there because that's very fleeting. It's very rare that I'll be like motivated to go, but it's now where it, now it's just a routine. It's a habit. It's just like second nature. I wake up and I, and I go to the gym and now I've been finding activities that um, I get excited about. So I talked in my last video about doing ballet and um, I still haven't gone yet, but I've been, um, just excited about like doing things that are activity related, exercise related that bring me joy. So this um, hot yoga class, I have it in the mornings as well, but I've been going to the nighttime classes. So I'll train in the morning and then I look forward to the nighttime class and then the ballet, I did kickboxing for a bit. It's just finding something that like brings you joy. It doesn't have to be the uh, standard thing that everybody else does. Everyone talks about like walking, like maybe that's your thing. A lot of people like Pilates and some stuff like Pilates is very expensive. Um, also looking on YouTube and finding like videos and stuff. I would say an accountability partner, but I think that can get a little tricky because sometimes maybe one person isn't in the same mindset as the other one. And if someone isn't showing up in the way that the other one wants, then it can cause some problems. These are from Velour and they're in the minimalist style. They needed to pop a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna grab this random lip liner that you can't get, unfortunately. It's the KKW Beauty one in 0.5. I don't know what happened with her beauty brand, but it's just like non-existent. Um, I'm gonna line and overline my lips with this. It's like a light pinky beige. I watched Kylie Jenner's Vogue get ready with me. It looks like she's coming out with lip liner because she used a sample. So I'm excited to try those. I'm a sucker for lip liners. Which speaking of, how are we feeling about the trailer of the new Kardashians if you watch the Kardashians? This seems very blah. Like the trailer is just very blah. And then they are coming out with the till death do us part with Courtney and Travis. And I'm like, I feel like we know we know the details of that wedding. We know the ins and outs already. So I just feel like it's very weird and unnecessary. I don't know, you tell me. But if you just like generally like just don't like them in general, you probably don't care about any of that. But I find their show very interesting. I, I like watching it, but the last season was boring and then this new season looks kind of boring and uh. And Chloe's back with Tristan, which I am just like, what? that's a whole other topic. I just cannot. And like, I've talked about this with a couple of people, but I like that Courtney is happy with Travis, but it just seems like she has like completely changed who she was to be with him. She's changed even a lot about her personality. Like just the things that she does is very different. And again, I don't know her. <laughs> I'm an outsider watching from my home. Um, but like her whole style is totally different, which is fine. Like, it's not like, oh my gosh, this is an issue. It's just weird that it would be such a flip, like not even just for a little phase of like, oh, you just started wearing leather jackets a little bit more, or maybe a little bit more black. It's like her whole brand of who she is is just different. Um, and so it just feels like she changed who she was for him, which is just so odd. I don't know. I'm glad that she's happy though. It's just like, what? I'm almost just kind of like, What's going on? I'm going in with Hazelnut Tea from Laura Mercier. This is normally a color that I wear in the fall, but I think this is gonna be like the perfect color for this look. To deepen it up. It's very pretty. I'm gonna go into the Jaclyn Cosmetics Bubble Drip Lip Gloss. Cute. 
cute. Okay, here's a close up of the makeup. Um, I love how this turned out. I feel like it looks really fresh with that lip and the cheek. Um, it's nothing crazy. It's very neutral, but I like the peachiness in the eyes. Just a good everyday look. I know this look, this video wasn't really about the makeup. It was more about the questions and hanging out. Um, but yeah, let me take out this hair so you can see what that looks like. I need to go grab a brush. Okay, let me go get a brush and I'll be right back. Oh my gosh. Okay, just brushed through it and then added a little bit of oil through the ends just to help like, I was gonna say articulate it. That's not the word, define the curls a little bit more. Let me know if you want a tutorial. It's a little bit bigger than normal because again, I let this sit for some time. But holy shit, I'm kind of loving it. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for asking your questions. Um, I had a lot of fun answering them because it has been just so long since I've done one of these. So um, let me know what makeup you guys want to see from me. I've been in a very like makeup-y kind of mood. Just kind of getting back to like old school makeup days. I just kind of miss it. I, it's been a while. It's I've, I got very vlog heavy during like fall and winter and I'm kind of just in the mood for makeup again. So let me know what you think. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye guys.